Hello, I'm Lawrence Grayson for shortformvideo.com and here's another After Effects tutorial for you. Um, in today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use uh, Mocha, which is a standalone package that comes with um, CS4 and CS5 to corner pin uh, this motion graphic, which you may find fairly familiar if you've uh, been to my site, um, and take it and apply it to the screen of this iPod Touch as it moves. So exactly how do we do that? Well, let's start by uh, Alt and Tabbing to Mocha that I've got open already. And I'll open the same clip you saw in After Effects. Now, the important thing about Mocha is that it gets really touchy if you mix your footage or mix your media. So it's really, really important here to make sure that the footage you're using is the same um, frame rate, frame resolution, and aspect ratio as the, uh, the target project that you're working in. So, uh, as you can see, I shot this with my HVX202 in 720p, so it's uh, spotted that from the footage. So I'll just OK that. And there it is. As you can see, we've uh, just opened up the same file in the Mocha tool window. So I'll just uh, scrub that right back to the beginning. OK, so the first thing we need to do is tell Mocha the area we want it to track. So we do this by uh, using the Create XSpline Layer tool, which is at the top. And we're going to be tracking the, uh, the whole iPod. So just draw some points around the edges of the iPod. You stop drawing by uh, right-clicking with the mouse, and it'll just snap back to the last point you selected. Now, if you hold down Z, click on the frame and move your mouse up, you'll scroll inwards. And if you hold down X, you get the hand tool, and uh, you can move around. And that's obviously going to be pretty handy if we're doing um, some fairly close-up adjustments. So what I want to do is just uh, tidy this up a bit, because obviously, as you can see it, these lines don't really match up with the, uh, the outside of the iPod. So the idea here is to, to make it as close as you can to the actual perspective of the object you want to track. OK, so that's told Mocha the area that we want to track. Um, before we go any further, though, we need to define the area um, that we will we'll be using to corner pin our video asset when we take it back to After Effects. So to do that, you toggle the, uh, the surface view. So it's this button here, the Show Hide Surface. And that will bring up this four-point panel um, around your scan area. So we're just going to zoom in. It's really important to uh, make this as accurate as you can because, as I said, this will define your, your corner pin area in your final After Effects project. So, uh, we're just going to pin it to just the outside of the screen. Give it a little bit of overlap because that'll make it look a little bit better later. So remember, I'm holding down X to uh, scroll around the screen. OK, that looks good. OK, so we're just about ready to start tracking. Um, you can do this one frame at a time, um, or like the, the standard motion tracker in After Effects, you can hit a button and uh, let the software do the rest. So we go to Track and Track Forwards, or you can hit the, uh, the Greater Than key, which is Shift and Full Stop, and it automatically starts tracking through time. Now, while you might be tempted to go away and make a cup of tea at this stage, it's uh, a pretty good idea to keep an eye on the track as it happens. Um, Mock is pretty good at what it does, but there are times, particularly when the object is moving around quite quickly, or the edges of the object that's been tracking are a little bit blurred because you've, you've um, used a slow shutter speed, for example, um, it may actually lose the, um, the accuracy just slightly. OK, we're starting to slide a little bit there. So uh, use the colon button, which is shift and semicolon, to step back a frame. As you can see, we just started to lose this line as it moved. So we can just make a little bit of an adjustment. And you can hit the semicolon button to manually advance frame by frame. Okay, we're losing it at the bottom left-hand corner now, so uh, colon, go back. It's 
semicolon to go forwards. Okay, I think we're back on track, so greater than to go back to the automatic. And as you can see, this takes a little bit of a while, so um, what I'll do is I'll let this complete, and um, I'll see you on the other side when it's done. Okay, so Mock has done its thing, um, so we've got a complete set of uh, tracking points. As you can see, I've made some manual changes um, as it got a little bit uh, fuzzy around the high motion areas. But other than that, Mock did a really, really good job of uh, auto-tracking it. Now, just to make this a little bit more obvious, I'll toggle the grid view, which actually shows the plane that it's created. Just hit play. And as you can see, we've got some data that tracks the object that we've, um, we've outlined um, and follows it through 3D space, which is pretty cool. So what do we do with it now? So click on Export Tracking Data. Select the After Effects corner pin. Um, which, interestingly enough, supports motion blur, so you can actually um, try and add motion blur to match the motion of the object that you've tracked. Now, you can save this as a TXT file and copy and paste it at a later date, which is kind of handy if you, if you may be uh, using this data for multiple projects. Or if you just want the quick and dirty one, which we'll be using, is uh, copy the data to the clipboard. So I've done that. Okay, so we're back in After Effects. I've created a new composition with our original source material, source footage in it. Um, now we just need to create an object that will go inside the screen, the corner pin screen. Now I've got this uh, motion graphics background that you may have seen on shortformvideo.com. But you can see there's a problem already. It's not the same size, frame rate and aspect ratio of the source material. So if we apply the, uh, the corner pin values to this, it's not going to work. Not quite what we were after. So uh, let me delete that. I'll create a new composition and select the same aspect ratio as the source material. And we will drop our pink champagne into it. Oh, that's the blue champagne. Doesn't really matter. So I'll just scale this up so that it fills the screen. Now when we go back, we can drop the uh, New comp on top and apply the corner pin values just by selecting it and hitting Control and V. And there it is. It's as easy as that. Now you'll probably have noticed one serious problem. It shrunk it. It's gone to portrait view um, and that's not the effect we want because obviously when you're playing a video like this you really will be playing it in landscape view. So if we go back to the composition I created Basically what we need to do here is reverse the changes that uh, the corner pin tool is going to apply to it. So I'm just going to rotate it to minus 90. And then we'll play with the scale. Unlink the scale sliders so you can um, adjust them independently. And rescale it so that it matches the size of the composition. Now when we go back to the mocker test footage, you'll find it's there. Now you can play with the levels, you can um, maybe add a little bit of blur to the outside, I and mean, you could put a quick rounded rectangle on it if you wanted to just uh, trim it a bit, make it look as if it belongs there a little bit more. But on the whole, I'd say that was pretty good. Um, if you're feeling uh, clever, then you can create a 3D cube and use the data that you created to make it look as if it's suspended over the iPod. All I've done is taken the uh, position and rotation data um, created in Mocha and applied it to the transform function of the 3D object, but uh, that's pretty cool too. Okay, well I hope that was uh, of some use to you. Um, obviously that's, the, uh, that's it for now. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, visit shortformvideo.com for free motion graphics and future tutorials. Thanks very much. See you soon.